But let's say you wanted to go in here and manipulate real lights. Well, you can't do that in Substance Painter. However, you can do that in Marmoset. Now, there's a whole section of going straight from ZBrush right into Marmoset uh, Toolbag. And in fact, now that Marmoset Toolbag 4 can texture, we can do everything we just did in Substance Painter in Marmoset Toolbag. However, if you've already done a lot of work in Painter and you just want to throw this result into Marmoset, we can do that as well. So what I'm going to do is go up here to File, Export Textures. And it's going to be based on each mesh texture set size, so that's going to be uh, 2048. Output Directory, I'll just go ahead and keep that on my desktop. Instead of 2D View, let's go down here to Unreal Engine 4 Packed. Go ahead and say Export. And if you click that Output Directory button, you're going to see we now have and sort by day modified, we have a base color, a normal, and a, an occlusion, roughness, and metallic map. So we can take those right into Marmoset. So let's go ahead and load up Marmoset. And really all it needs is a square plane with UVs in the zero to one. Uh, if you wanna just grab one, you can go in here to your C program files, pixel optics, ZBrush 2021, Z startup, Z plug 64, ZBrush compositor to data 2021, and then files. And in here you have a UV plane OBJ, this is just all you need. Just go ahead and drop that right in here. It already has a default material applied. If you want, you just click this plus sign here. This will be your new material. We'll call it Scarab. You can just double click on that name there. Let's drag that right onto our plane here. And then if we double click Scarab, you're gonna see we have a bunch of inputs for our object. So back on my desktop here, again, we have our uh, output images. So our base color, I'm gonna drop right into our albedo. Our normal, I'm gonna drop right into our surface normal map here. And if I uh, shift right click, you're gonna see that's gonna also move around the light in your scene. And if your normal looks a little bit weird, just go in here and say flip Y. And our third map, if you remember, is called occlusion roughness metallic. These correspond to the different channels. So if I go into Photoshop here and I drop in that image, it's gonna look pretty crazy. However, you just go over here to channels you're gonna see red is our occlusion. So the first one, occlusion, roughness, metallic. Red's the occlusion, green's the roughness, blue is the metallic. So it's telling it where the metal is and where it isn't, where it's shiny, where it's matte, and where our ambient occlusion is. So now that we know that, we can use that packed image to drive these. You're gonna see down here underneath microsurface, we have a roughness map checked. Let's go ahead and drop this in here. And again, it's occlusion, roughness, metallic. So our roughness is green, occlusion, roughness, metallic. So we'll choose the green channel. Ref reflectivity, you see it's, it's metalness. And by the way, if it was, if you exported spec gloss, for, for, you know, if you're doing something else, just take this roughness and choose it to uh, change it to gloss, change this metalness and change it to specular. And there's your spec gloss model. Uh, but in here, we're gonna drop that exact same texture in our metalness map. And our metalness is gonna be in the blue channel. If we scroll down, you're gonna see we have an occlusion section here. So let's click that down arrow and say we have an occlusion map. We'll go ahead and drop that same map in here. And again, occlusion is first. So that is our red channel. Now transparency, if you click that down and you say, uh, let's just do cut out. By def it's gonna actually work just fine. And by default, it's using the alpha map uh, from the albedo. So if we go back up here to the albedo map, or in this case, the base color we exported, and I click that, you're gonna see it has transparency built in and it's using that transparency to cut this out. Now, this is just in Marmoset and it's just applied to a plane. So if I hold down shift and right click, it's still gonna move that light around, but we're not gonna pick up any shadows in this instance. So we're getting this, the painter stuff that we exported from painters. So we're getting a very painter result here, but we're not, get, not able to get any shadows. Well, we can still do that in Marmoset. All I gotta do is go over here to displacement, choose height. And for that displacement map, you can quickly just hop back into Painter, go up here to where it says Project, right-click Displacement, say Export Resource. I'm gonna drop this right on my desktop, say Select Folder, and now we have a displacement sitting on our uh, desktop here. So I'm gonna hop back into Marmoset. I'm gonna drop our displacement right here. And now you're gonna see it's starting to displace. We can change that scale. Now you're gonna see when we're adding the scale, uh, it's not really uh, looking that great. Uh, what you're gonna to need to do is go over here and select that plane itself, and over here choose subdivide, and you actually up the subdivision levels to get more resolution. So if you change our subdivision level to four, we're getting a lot better resolution on that uh, as well. Now, we're not looking straight at the object right now, so we can go in here to our main camera, we can choose back, or I'm sorry, 
front, and now we're in the front camera view. However, this is going to eventually limit us when we get into some effects that only work with the main camera or with a perspective camera. A way around that is you can choose your main camera, and then with that camera selected main camera up here, set it from perspective to orthographic. So now we can actually use the main camera in an orthographic way. So uh, again, we're in Marmoset Toolbag 4. There's a lot of really cool things you can do in here now. Uh, one of the things is a library you can use with your sky. You can actually go up here to Window and turn on your library and you can go through here. There's a lot of, there's materials and textures and all sorts of cool stuff in here now. However, if you go down here to Presets, you're gonna see we have a lot more skies to choose from. Let's go over here to Midday. I'm just gonna double click one of these. If you see anything in here with a cloud on it, that means it's not local yet. So you can just double click that one. It'll spin a little bit that gear icon until it's downloaded. Then when you double click it, it'll go ahead and apply it to your mesh. And just like Painter, you can hold down Shift and rotate this um, image around. So we'll go ahead and grab one of these. Here's, that's a pretty cool one. If you want to with the sky selected, again, you can go through here and you can choose, you know, how bright that is, and in fact, there's even child lights here. So if you wanna add a light to our sky, we can just click in here. So we've added a skylight, we can click and move this around. It'll pick up the color and turn it into a light. And in fact, with this uh, child skylight selected, we can even go in here and change the brightness of just that one. So in fact, let's go over here, uh, go back to our sky, choose our presets. Let's choose a little bit of a darker one, maybe this street cobblestone here. Hold on shift to kind of rotate that image around a light or object here. And now I'm going to put in a child light here. Again, we can just move this child light around. So when I move it over here, it'll kind of pump up that light. And then we can even select that child light in particular, and then go in here to brightness and crank that up. And then we'll go back here to our sky. Now, as soon as I click and move this, it's going to lose that because it's really just sampling what's underneath. But again, if we could just go back to the skylight here, crank up that brightness. And again, if I want to look at this straight on, I'm going to go back to my main camera up here under transform. I'm going to zero out these rotations. So now I know I'm looking just straight on here and then I hold down shift and rotate our sky around, which is rotating not only our main sky, but also our child as well. And if I want to change that again, I go back here to the child and then drop that brightness down just a bit. Now, there's a whole bunch more stuff we can do in Marmoset now. Uh, Marmoset Toolbag 4, like underneath texture, we can actually texture it just like we did in Painter. Uh, but if you just wanna take your Painter results and put them into Marmoset and use a little bit more of their lighting effects or going in here to your camera effects and going down to say their post effects, you can go through here and change these. You can even use presets in here if you wanna do like a black and white or a Polaroid look, vivid. These are kinda like Instagram filters, burnt. These are very cool. Or you can just go in here manually and you can you know, add a little bit of sharpness to your image here. You can even take some of that bloom that we were playing around with in Painter. Add a vignette. And now if you want to render all this out to go back into Photoshop, let's click that render gear icon. And in fact, we haven't even turned on ray tracing. So we actually use ray tracing now. So this will give us like an eye ray look. It'll use ray tracing to get us even more accurate reflections and bounces. If there's any noise in here, you can crank up your crank up your samples. Now this is just viewport. So if you're getting a noisy viewport, that's where you're gonna fix this. However, if you wanna fix noise in your final render image, go down here to where it says output. Uh, you can output image or video. We're gonna focus on image right now. You can change your resolution here, your format. And in here in the output image, this is where you can change your samples to get rid of your render noise, any denoise strength you wanna add. Etc. So if I go ahead and hit just hit render image. Here's our rendered image from Marmoset. And in fact, I can even go in here to turn on transparency. And then when I hit render now, that'll do a version with uh, PNG transparency. So that's how you can go from Painter to Marmoset using your export and Painter maps and then use uh, all the cool stuff that Marmoset has uh, in it to get your final image. But like I said before, you can do everything we just did in Painter all directly in Marmoset. So we'll get to that uh, in a bit.